Hi, welcome to this video on cargo and rust up commands. My name is Doug Milford from Lambda Valley. Cargo is the backbone of development automations for Rust. It can create new projects, update your dependencies, run unit and integration tests, publish your package, and much, much more. It really takes tedious operations off of your shoulders so that you can focus on more important things. Similarly, RustUp will help you manage what version of Rust you're using called the toolchain. It makes it easy to update Rust to the latest or even to target newer features not yet released, known as the beta toolchain. You can even target the nightly toolchain if you're willing to play with a shifting sandbox of the latest and greatest features. I recommend you stick with the stable toolchain unless you really need a newer feature. I'll do some examples of changing your toolchain with RustUp within this video. Let's play around with cargo commands to give you a sense about how it works. I'm going to use the cargo command to create a new project. In my hello world, I created the files and folder manually, but let's now use the cargo new command to automate those steps. Although you'll often be using cargo commands inside a Visual Studio Code terminal, cargo commands are actually available from any command line if you had followed my setup video. So I'm going to open up a generic command line and navigate to my CTEMP folder as I'm not really planning on keeping this project around after this video. I'm going to navigate to the correct folder to start our project. At the moment, the only thing in this folder is the hello world we created manually earlier. If I type cargo new followed by what I want to call my new project, it'll create a project folder with all the necessary files and folders inside. Note, the naming convention is all lowercase where words are separated by an underscore, otherwise known as snake case. That's not a requirement as you see by my original hello world. You can name it whatever you like. And there's nothing special about Doug's or Bin, I just had to call it something. If you saw an error message here, it means that your cargo install did not work correctly. You might want to go back to the setup video and see if you missed a step. You'll notice that there's now a folder here, and if I go inside, it looks like a basic Rust package setup with the cargo.toml file and an src folder. And inside, there's a main.rs file. Let's go ahead and open this project up in Visual Studio Code. Keep in mind that we did not use Visual Studio Code to create this project, but we can still open it from there. So, go to File. Open folder, and open the folder we just created. Okay, so it created a cargo.toml file with pretty much the same thing we did by hand in the Hello World video. It also has a helpful link if you'd like to peruse. We have our SRC folder, which is the folder for your source code. And in there we have a single main.rs file that has a Hello World message being printed out. You may notice that there's a new git ignore file at the root level. This isn't a tutorial about source code, but if you'll be pushing this to git, this file will help you filter out files and folders that shouldn't be included. Files and folders are green, indicating that they're ready to commit to git. The white files and folders will be excluded. In any case, we'll leave that discussion for a different video. I'll go ahead and use the command cargo run to actually run the program and get to the same spot that we did in the hello world. And there we go. We can also do similar steps for a library or a lib project. As a reminder, the bin project is meant to run on its own. The lib project is meant to run by other programs and cannot run on its own. It's a way of being modular about program development. Let's close up this bin project just to be tidy. I'll go back to my command line and call cargo new Doug's lib example dash dash lib. The dash dash is used to pass an option to the command. In this case, we're saying we want a lib package, not a bin package. The default is a bin package if you don't specify anything. Let's open up the lib project in Visual Studio Code. You see a lot of the same stuff as before, except this time the file in the src folder is called lib.rs. We can now run the cargo build command to compile it. Since this is a lib package, cargo run will not work. Since we're on the topic of cargo build, let's discuss that a little more. We've used it in multiple videos up until this point, 
But what exactly is it doing? Let's go back to the bin project. When you build your package, what happens is it creates a target folder. Inside there, it'll create a folder specific to the debug build or the release build. We've only done debug build so far, which is the default when you type cargo build, so that's why there's no release folder yet. To do so, we can type cargo build dash dash release, and now you'll see a release folder that holds that build. Before we go any deeper, why are there two types of builds? It's going to be a trade off between compile speed, runtime speed, and the ability to debug with breakpoints. The debug mode often compiles faster and lets you set breakpoints, which is nice when you're developing. Nothing feels like a bigger waste of time than sitting around waiting for your package to build, and being able to set breakpoints in your code is a necessity. The release mode is going to try and optimize for runtime speed so that the real user of your application gets fast running code. But in order to do that, it often takes much longer to compile. That's why developers may hold off on doing a release build until it's ready to publish so that they don't have to wait around as much when they're developing. If I go into either the debug folder or the release folder of the bin package, you'll see a file with your project name and the extension of .exe. Double clicking that will actually run your program. Currently our programs just print to a command line and then immediately exit. It's actually running exactly as we programmed it and it's not crashing. It just opens and closes in the blink of an eye and it doesn't wait for user input. So I'm going to change the code real quick to wait for some user input. In the main.rs file, I'm going to ask the user to enter some text and wait for a response. That way we can at least confirm the program is running. If the code doesn't make much sense to this point, don't worry about it. Now, after I rebuild it, you can see that our program now runs simply by double clicking the executable file. For those of you who are severely disappointed the program is actually an ugly command line, I want to remind you that I will be doing a 3D graphics in the browser series in the future. Until then, we need to learn to walk before we fly, so hang in there. On large, complex projects, sometimes the cargo build command can take some time. If you aren't ready to run the package yet, but still want to check for compile errors, you can type cargo check to get a faster response. It bypasses the last step of actually generating the final runnable code, which is time consuming. Let's go back to our example lib package and open up the lib.rs file. So what is all this funky stuff here? That relates to unit tests, which is built into Rust for your convenience. I'll go in more depth on testing in a later video, but if you like, you can use the command cargo test and it'll actually run your lib code as a test. Feel free to play around with it if you like. Let me quickly modify the test so that it'll fail so that you can at least see what that looks like. And if I modify it again such that it'll pass, it'll turn back to green. Once you create a package, you'll probably want documentation on how to use it. If you type cargo doc, documentation will be auto-generated for you in the target doc folder. This will be useful when you publish to crates.io so that others can use your crate. The documentation will be nice and standardized, but also include your specific notes. I'll be talking about how to use comments to fill out our documentation in a future video. And of course, at some point, you may want to share your code with the outside world. The command cargo publish will take your package and compile it into a crate for others to use. You'll need to get a token with crates.io before you can publish. If you don't, you'll get a red message asking you to log in. In any case, if you ever want to know how you're supposed to publish your crate, this is how. You can also publish to other sites besides crates.io, but crates.io is considered the default. I've really only scratched the surface with cargo commands. There's an enormous amount of functionality that cargo can do that is simply too large for me to address in one small video. I encourage you to check out this documentation though and get a feel for all the magic of cargo commands. Cargo manages your package and its dependencies so that you don't have to do it manually, which would be a major pain. But we also need to update the REST engine when its features come out. 
That's where RustUp comes in. Like Cargo, RustUp is a terminal or command line tool that will help you manage your Rust toolchain, aka what version of Rust you're using. I'm going to close down Visual Studio Code as having it open seems to hold a lock on a file that needs to be updated. Instead, I'll use a regular command line for RustUp. If I wanted to target a specific older version of Rust, I can use RustUp install 1.30.0 or whatever version you choose. This can help put a stake in the ground if you don't want Rust to shift on you as you're developing. It's much easier to develop towards a target when your tools aren't moving around. I'm going to speed up the video slightly so we're not waiting for the install to finish. Note, this didn't remove our old toolchain of 1.37.0 that we are currently using. It only added another toolchain that we can target if we like. As we'll see shortly, we can put multiple toolchains on our computer and switch between them fairly easily. If you wanted to install newer features of Rust that haven't been released as stable yet, you can always specify you want the beta version like this. Or, for bleeding edge features, you can get the nightly toolchain like this. I recommend you stick with the stable version unless you have a very specific need for newer features. I'm able to target which toolchain to default on projects. I'll set mine to the beta toolchain by typing rustup default beta. If I now type the command rustc dash dash version, you can now see we're defaulting to the beta toolchain. We'll switch that to the nightly version now, and once again we can verify with rustc dash dash version that we're now using the nightly toolchain. And we can even do it for a specific toolchain. Let's use the 1.30.0 that we installed earlier. I'm going to set this back to the stable version now. And of course, if you need to uninstall a toolchain, you probably may have already guessed that you just use the uninstall keyword instead of install. As with Cargo, I've really only barely scratched the surface with RustUp. I recommend you stick with the stable version unless you really need to target the beta or nightly toolchains. For more in-depth documentation on RustUp, you can go to the following URL. I hope you enjoyed this video on cargo and rust up commands. My name is Doug Milford with Lambda Valley, and I'll see you next time.